Hey guys, welcome to Drawing with Waffles, and today we're going to be doing the Paint the Clouds Challenge. Um, for this challenge, all you need is a camera, a computer, which almost everyone has both of those, some kind of software like Photoshop or the GIMP, and then a drawing tablet. However, if you don't have a drawing tablet and you're interested in doing it traditionally, I will show you how to do that at the end of the video, but for the means of my challenge, I did it digitally. So let's get started! First things first, you're gonna need a picture of some clouds. I went outside and took a picture. I mean, because my dog had to pee anyway, so yeah. I just brought my camera with me, and I took some pictures of the clouds. I took like quite a few, and then when I came inside, I picked my favorite one, the one that I could actually see some kind of picture in the clouds. Um, when you take a picture of the clouds, you're gonna do best if you have a nice open space without trees so that you can get more clouds into one single picture. So like a lake or a parking lot. Then once you've got your picture chosen, you just bring it into Photoshop or the GIMP, lower the opacity, and start sketching. Oh, and make sure when you start sketching, you're not sketching on the actual picture of the clouds, but you create a new layer and sketch on top of it that way. As soon as I looked at this picture that I had taken, I automatically saw this like weird seahorse slash crocodile thing in the top left, so that's what I started with. And it kind of looks kind of like uh, a horsey, like the Pokemon horsey, but you know, it's different. Um, the best part about this challenge is that it kind of takes you out of your comfort zone and lets you create something like entirely new because clouds aren't gonna like automatically look like a person or a girl like I usually draw. So I was able to like, you know, try something new. Like I would not normally draw a half crocodile, half seahorse thing. And I did this time because the clouds kind of, you know, sparked that kind of imagination inside me. So I was able to see something that I wouldn't normally see, if that makes sense. With the cloud on the right, it was a little bit more imagination, but I did see like an eyeball. So I started with the eyeball and then I sort of like built this weird toad-like creature around it. And it, at first it had like these wind chimes hanging down. Then I saw a way that I could have turned that into feet. And I decided to go with the feet because since he kind of looks like a toad, um, toads are ground creatures, so I kind of wanted him to have feet so he could walk around. And then I added like jump motion marks, so it looks like he's jumping into the clouds with the flying crocodile thing. <laughs> I don't know. That's the best part about this challenge, you really can't lose. You just sort of throw stuff at the canvas and see what happens. I also added these like bubbles all over the place because at first I thought they both looked like fish. So I was going to add bubbles like they were underwater. I mean I kept the bubbles because it's different, but so they're kind of like air bubbles. I guess. Well, I mean, all bubbles are air bubbles, but I mean, bubbles in the air. And there were just so many, like, small little clouds, I didn't know what to do with them, and bubbles was the first thing that came to my mind. I didn't see this originally, but maybe I should have just taken a little bit more time to stare at the picture to see different things before I started sketching, but now I'm looking at the cloud right underneath the seahorse crocodile thing, and I'm seeing a shoe. Like, I didn't see that at first, but I could have made that a shoe. And I'm seeing an eyeball, so it could have been a shoe with an eyeball, since everything else has an eyeball right now, so yeah, whatever. What I'm trying to say is different people could look at the same cloud and see different things. So for that reason, I will be supplying this picture that I took of clouds for all you guys if you want to try to do the cloud challenge with the same picture and see what you come up with. I think that'd be really cool, so link for that will be in the description. This part is totally optional, but I decided to color my pictures because I kind of had some colors in my mind of what they looked like, so I decided to go ahead and do that. I just learned this technique where if you have a background and the background like consists of mostly blue, what you do is you fill in the characters that need to stand out from the background in the complementary color when blue's complementary color is orange. So I colored in both those guys with orange, then I used colors that I actually want them to be, like I wanted the toad to be green, so I used a green color and then lowered the opacity of that and painted over the orange. That way the green still has a hint of orange which helps it, you know, stand out from the background. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just learned it and it's really, really cool and I've been trying to use it lately and I think it works, so you can try that out if you'd like. It just helps your character stand out from the background. Like, I know this picture doesn't really have a background, but I wanted it to stand out from the clouds. But if you had a busy background and it was mostly one color, you can use this technique to help your characters stand out. But I mean, I really shouldn't talk because I don't really draw backgrounds ever, so whatever. Yeah. 
Anyway, this is the result of my paint the clouds challenge, and now if you're interested, I'm going to be showing you how to do the same challenge, but traditionally. First, just import your image of the clouds into your editing software, such as Photoshop or the GIMP. I'll have a link to the GIMP in the description if you want to download that one for free. And what you're going to do is just edit the contrast so that the whites are whiter and the darks are darker, so the clouds will stand out from the blue background. Then all you want to do is just lower the brightness of the entire image so that when you print it, it doesn't use up too much ink and when you draw over it, the actual image of the clouds will be a little bit more subtle so that whatever you draw on top of it with like a sharpie will stand out and you'll see the picture instead of just the clouds. Then you just print it out and I decided to print out the picture half a page so that if I did like any of the characters I created I could redraw them on the bottom half of the page. Then the challenge begins, and you can use either a pencil or a pen, and then just draw right on top of the picture that you just printed out. I went with the pen because I thought it would be a lot cooler to, you know, not rely on erasing, and you can just be completely creative with it, and there's no erasing, so whatever you end up with is what you got, which I think helps you create things that are actually original. At least for me, because I've noticed that the more I refine a sketch, the more it ends up looking like some of my favorite artist things or like Disney things, and it's less my own because I'm like, oh, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm gonna refine it to the only way that I like the only standards I have, which are for like Disney or other people. So the more I just I play with it, the less it looks like my own. At least for me, because I prefer to sketch with pens. I feel like it's more fun, and you never really know what you're gonna end up with, which is always exciting. And then here on the last one, I tried to use the pencil just to see what would happen, and I ended up with a lot of like extra stuff that I didn't use, but I didn't want to erase it either, because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> and then that's the finished result for my traditional version of the Paint the Clouds challenge. Um, as you can see, I did it twice, and each with the same picture, and I came up with completely different pictures, so that was really cool. And so I suggest any of you go and try it out. It was a lot of fun, and um, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles! Bye!